Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. I loved it. Oh, did you? I, I did. I watched it all. Um, what do you think sets it apart from, because people are obviously going to be thinking, you know, there's a UK version, there's a US version. What is different about our version? Um, we have Roombas. I think that's very important. Uh, there are animals in an episode. There is, <laughs> there's an episode where we're all in pyjamas. And may I say to everyone that watches that episode, I apologise. Um, the, the, we intentionally got a pair of pajamas that were not quite the right size. So I just we took like four episodes, uh, four days to film an episode. Just had a wedgie for four days and just like gangly, just my, the most unruly tits you've ever seen. That's uncomfortable though to have a wedgie for four days. It, but that's what I do. I suffer for my art. Yeah, fair enough. It's. I think it's just very Australian. It's like when you get Australians who write a script, it's just Australian. Then you put a bunch of Australians in, it just makes it more Australian. And so I think that it's sort of got the warmth of the um, American one, but it has the space and the awkward pauses of the British one. Yeah, I love that. A lot of people, you know, the US one was such a success, but I'm sure that when it came out, people who are fans of the UK version were like, why are we doing this? Yeah. So what do you have to say to the doubters? You don't, you don't remember you're not old enough, do you? I love the US one. I, I, I haven't really watched the UK I know. I, are you a millennial? <laughs> yes. Yes, that, is, that seems to be the unanimous experience, that millennials are like the 100% American one and then Gen X are very much the British one. And Gen Z are also like the American one too. Um, Oh, look, I, I know what it's like to love something and feel protective over it being remade. I absolutely understand that. But if you look at the American one, there was a huge backlash. People were very, very angry. And it's its, its own thing. And that's the same with the Australian one. People will be angry and people will be really happy about it as well and have your feelings and we're all just doing our best. But I hope that you... Ooh, what was that? What was that? Oh, was that the, my phone? <laughs> oh, my God, how embarrassing. I've disconnected in case that was <laughs> just ruining my own interview. Um, well, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Um, I, would, I would say just watch it and then decide. Yeah. Like with anything, like we can all have our contempt prior to investigation, but if you watch it, then have an opinion. That's what I would say. We, you know, we saw Kath and Kim go to America. It didn't quite work, but what do you think is the key, and that's not the case here, I love it. What do you think is the key to creating a great localised um, version of something? Well, I think the thing about all of the offices are that the concept is so universal, whereas maybe with Kath and Kim, it's so specifically Australian. We all knew every single one of those characters, specifically those personalities, those um, like pronunciations. And um, I think they're called egg corns when you pronounce a word incorrectly, but it still makes sense. There were so many of those um, in Kath and Kim. And I don't know if that happens a lot in American culture. But with the American office, for example, the first series were, was all the same as the British scripts. And when it got, it got, it found its success when it wrote its own scripts and it was like, not Americanized, but it was like appropriate to its own culture. Like it reflected its own culture. And from, from the beginning, we've started with original scripts. They're all Australian scripts. Um, well, and Kiwi, uh, just for our, <laughs> our director who sort of helped create it and, um, and another director, uh, Kiwis, and there's lots of Kiwis in the cast. It's very anti Badean. Yeah. How much of Hannah do you think is in Felicity and Felicity? So much. Yeah. <laughs> so much. Like the Venn diagram of Hannah and Felicity is nearly a circle. I would say what I have that Hannah doesn't is self-awareness, but I am just, I'm just as annoying and um, I think, I, you know what, I think if I was a boss I would be as bad at it as she is. So I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Well, you were cast very well then. I think it's much. I heard that in the US version, they had, um, like, all their computers were actually connected to the internet. Yes. So people would be, you know, messaging or playing games yeah. and stuff. What's something from behind the scenes of your version that viewers might not expect when they're watching it? Josh Thompson, who plays um, Martin, the HR, did all of his... He did two years' worth of taxes because all of our computers were fully operational. All our phones called each other. They were... Everything was fully operational. So Josh did... He edited... Um, um, half of his wife's short film and he did taxes for two years. <laughs> so we'd come in and we're like, all right, we're going to do this. And he's like, hang on, I'm just, I've just got to do expenses. And we're like, hey, mate, love that, this, that you're getting this done. Love this for you. Also, let's film. <laughs> let's do our job. Let's do our job. Yeah. yeah. Um, does Ricky Gervais have anything to do? Like, have you spoken to him? Have you? Yeah. I haven't. I did 
do a gig with Stephen Merchant earlier this year, but it was a very small green room and it was before the show and it was a new material night, which is where you test your jokes for the first time. And I thought, if I say this to him and he goes, what? I don't want to deal with that for the next two hours while we're doing new material. So I just didn't say anything. Fair enough. And it's already done by then, right? It's you, too late, mate. You, don't, you, you can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how, that's how defensively I open conversations. I'm like, yeah, you can't even do anything about it anyway. Just don't even worry about it. Yeah, it's all filmed, eh? <laughs> Did you take any inspo from Michael Scott and... Um, David Brent? Know, David Brent, yes. No. Um, I had never seen an episode of The American One until I had finished filming. Great. Never. And uh, two things. One, one of the background actors one day said after a take, they went... <laughs> That was such a, that was so Michael Scott. I'm like, I have never seen an episode of the show. So yeah, thank you. Um, and then this was like, this was the most incredible thing. I got back. It's not the most incredible thing. That's an exaggeration. I got back from filming and I was like, oh, I haven't watched TV for ages, brag. And, um, and then I've been scrolling, doom scrolling, of course. I was like, oh, I'll just see what's on. And then I popped it on the TV. And you know how on, like, with streaming services, sometimes they'll play, like, a little snippet of the episode that they're trying to advertise. And the day that I finished filming, the last day, we did a couple of, like, the famous monologues just in case they ended up wanting to use them. I don't think they used any of them. But I did the monologue. People say I'm the best boss. I'm an entertainer. So I did that. I got back. I turned on the TV. And you just sort of forget that it's the office every now and again. I turn on the TV and it was Steve Carell, and he's going, people say I'm the best boss. And I was like, oh, my God, I filmed that five days ago. That was wild. I'm like, oh, I'm in the office. Yeah. And you were like, and I did a better job. That's so weird. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> what I'm going to openly say <laughs> publicly. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding, just kidding. Um, Ricky appeared in the US version, and then, you know, they had people like Will Ferrell and Idris mm. Elba. Do you have any dream um, guest stars that you would love to have in your... My version? dream guest star is me for 22 more seasons. That is my... <laughs> just to have another job. Great. It would be lovely. Uh, who would I love? I mean, I, I actually, um, at, on a whim, I messaged Jenna Fisher... And um, I was like, hello, um, I don't even know if you'll read this. I don't know if you check your own Instagram. My name is Felicity Ward. And she wrote back like immediately. She's like, I never check my DMs. We know about the show. We're so excited. Can you come on our podcast? So I'm like, oh, my God. Imagine, like, I would love to have Jenna on the show. Oh, that my gosh. Amazing. That would be such a dream. So I hope you said yes to being on her podcast. Yeah, of yeah, course. Of course. Oh, my God. Do you know what would be amazing? If we had um, Dawn and Pam a new lesbian couple come on season two. That's... All right, I'm going to speak to the writers. If we go again, that's what I want. Well, I hope you go again. So do I. Congratulations. I absolutely loved it. Thank um, you so much. And thank you for your time. Thanks for your time, Marnie.